Hello, this is Tolu Victor. Today, we will learn how to create form tabs and form sections in Power Apps. Form tabs and form sections allow developers to properly organize their forms. It enables users to easily click a tab to access a part of the form or just expand a section to view the desired form fields. We would also learn how to create these form tabs as a reusable component that can be used across your different apps and screens without having to rebuild it. And let's get into the video. And so we are on to Power App Studio. I've created a simple app, just a home page and some form pages. Well, this is a home page, and the form pages is the pages that will house the actual forms that we're going to edit today. And so this is just a simple form control, and we've connected it to the account data source, which is a dataverse table. So first of all, let's create some space for the component. And since this is going to be a reusable component, we're just going to hop over to the components page and create a component for this. So let's call it, what do we call it now? Let's call it form tabs component. Let's spell that correctly. Yep. First thing we are going to do is create some properties. This is what is basically going to control the component. All right, so since the height won't always be this height or this width, let's create a custom property for the components for height and width. And as a general rule of thumb, I always set um, input properties adding prefix of in, so I can always let in no in the app itself. Now, this is an input property. So it's in width, and this is going to be a type of number Let's add in height, in height, and that's also going to be a number, first number, number type. Save that. All right. So we are going to then set the width and height of this component to be dynamic based on whatever height and width is supplied to this component. So to access this, we will use the component's name, form tabs component. Let's go to the width property, click that, and that should come up here. And let's say form tab components dust in width. So that's now pointing to width here. And for the height, it's going to be more or less the same thing, but in height. So let's set this now, the width, let's say 1280 for now. And let's say this is um, 60. All right, then that's fine. So um, how we are going to create this um, components, we're going to add in a gallery. So it's going to be on horizontal gallery. So let's say horizontal. And let's set the height and width to be the parent height and width. So that's the height and width of the component. So parent dot width parent dot height. Let's set it to zero. So the next thing is the kind of data that we would supply into this. So a form tab will always have like a form tab label and then an ID to signify like to track the tab that is currently active. And so for that, we are going to need to create a table input. So let's call this in tab tables, labels, yeah. And let's set this to table. All right, and let's set, let's change this up. So we're just going to call this tab ID. So that's going to be a number um, variable. And the next one is tab label. And this is going to be, let's say the first one is overview, overview. 
it's fine that we can delete this one we only need two so let's just create about three because our component is going to have at least this one is going to have three so two three let's change this one to cont info let's change this one to other details all right that's fine and so the next thing is to supply that table into the component so this table is going to be dynamic based on wherever we feed it from within the app so let's go to the gallery and set the data source to form tab components dot in tab labels which is basically the area um, the comp property we just created so on our gallery what we are going to add is so first let's set the template size to let's set it to 200 for now and let's set this one to blank so let's add in some buttons so these are going to be the actual buttons of the um contact components so let's set this to um let's set the width to be the same thing as the template with parents normal parents of the parent the template width and the height to also be parents the template height all right all right all right so the next thing we're going to do is all oh, no let's create a little bit of um space let's say parent of height let's say minus 10 or something and we take it to the top so just to create a little bit of space on the net so on the bottom let's just do some styling depending on however you want to do this so the next styling we want to do is the main color of the button so that is going to also be a custom property so in main color and we're going to set the data type to color great that's let's leave this as this was the main color let's select um let's just get a simple color from this uh, so let's set it to the current field so color so now we've set the color to this and so on the button we are then going to set the color to that custom property we created so it's going to be form tabs components dot in main color so that is going to set the color to this and the other thing we want to do is font size let's say in font size let's set that to this that's going to be a number and we set that to let's say 13 and then the font size of the button to be from apps component dot in font size so that's all set up so the next step is to set the actual functionality of clicking so basically once you click a button it should set that tab as active and if you click another button it sets that tab as active so on select or the form of the tab of the gallery i mean basically on select we are going to create we're going to create a variable set current app to be the current um, label so this item dot tab label and we should also change this to show tab label rather than so this item the tab label yeah so it's taking shape already and um yeah that's fine so let's just do a little bit of testing to see 
if everything is working fine we have a gallery let's set that to current path so if you click this overview you click this yeah so everything works as expected so the next thing we are going to do is to set the color of the button to be dependent on whether it is the current tab or not so let's do that so on the field property so just select the field property from here so rather than this so we're going to add in a, a condition so if the current tab is equal to this item the tab label we are going to use the main color else it is going to be a white color so that is going to be or let's say transparent transparent is better in case your app is not white right so that's fine and then the next thing is the actual text color so that's the color property so this is also going to be so let's just copy and paste the, the what we did in the field we copy that paste it in first the color property paste that here or it's going to be reversed this time so basically if it is tab label it should be white that since the background is going to be a main color and then if it is this it should be um apps component dot in main color all right so it's everything is working fine nice so let's test it out all right so then just as another design tip let's just add a little rectangle on the knit just to show we set the width to we set the width to parent the width so whatever the width of the um um what they call it now the component and let's set the height to just be 10 and we should do some custom calculation so it will always be at the bottom of the components so let's say the y should be parent parent dot height minus self dot height so that is going to always put it at the bottom of the at the bottom of the component let's increase let's increase the button sizes will be minus five i guess yeah so that you can touch the touch this All right so everything is working fine so the next step is to add it to our form so back to the screens page we have our form and let's add in the component so we named it form tabs component so we should be able to see here um tabs component so the size and width is already set to this by default so now the next thing is just to just to set it i think a height of 60 is fine but let's increase this maybe 14 and let's um let's make it the same size as our form so the form one so for this component, the width, sorry, the width will be form one dot width. So they always have the same width and keep them on the same x form one dot x. So no matter where we move the form, it's always going to it's always going to resize accordingly. Yeah, that's fine. Let's just see. So everything works fine so the next thing is how is it going the how is the form going to know which tab is active so for that we are going to create an output property on our component so let's create that property but now the property type is going to be 
output and what do we call it now let's call it out current since it's an output property so out current tab and let's set it and let's set it to the current tab property that we created so you know on select of this gallery we are setting current tab which is a custom variable to this item to the label so basically we are going to be sending this variable out of the components so we are going to set the value of oh i didn't save it so let's out current tab it's going to be an output property and it is going to be a text yeah text is fine so it's created so you can see a separate head here and let's set it to our variable that we created the current tab that's fine so next thing is to test it on our app so let's just create a simple text label to just test it out and let's get in so to access an output property you are going to basically leverage the component name so let's copy the component name from here and on our text label form the one dot out current tab so here we should now test it and that's fine you see as we click any of this it's it changes the changes the um value let's just remove this border around it it, it looks kind of weird Let's set the border to zero. Yeah, that's fine. So we won't have any annoying bodies are still there. Let's set the well in that case, let's set the border color to self the fill over self the fill. Should be fine all right then so the next thing is to just connect the form to this um this component so basically if what we are doing now is if the current tab is equal to overview only a set of fields should be visible if it's equal to contact only a set of fields should be visible so to do that we are just going to select our form and select the field we want to be visible so what i want to be visible when we select overview is account number that's this so account name actually so let, let's just reorder the form based on what we want so account name description and and all and industry actually and that's the best so that's going to be our first um our first section so account name let's select it you hit control to select multiple so account name description i'm hitting control select multiple uh, data card and industry and then we are going to just set the visible property to be form tabs components dot out current tab so it should only be visible if font as component or out current app is equal to overview. Yeah. So let's do that again. Overview, it's visible. If you click another tab, it's not in there. So now let's do for the rest. So for contact info, what we want to do is email. Email main following and um website i guess yeah that should be fine so, so email main form as i said yeah i'm hitting control to select multiple main form and websites email in from website or this website here yeah. and then it sets the visible property to form tabs component dot 
out contact so if the output is equal to contact info that is only when it should be visible now let's test it to be sure so this yeah it's working fine components dot out current tab is equal to other details yeah and that is fine everything works as expected so let's see overview when we have account name yes contact info email main phone website other details that's where we have all this other detail so it's fine and let's not forget to delete our label to our app boxes and that is how it's going to work out so let's save this and since it's a component you don't have to you don't have to create it every time we need it so all we just let's create a new screen can always just add the component as many times as needed on tabs component and then all you need to do is modify the properties that you set there and you can use this anywhere you want to use and cross apps within the same app and outside your app and always use that component so that's fine and now to the form sections so the form sections is relatively more straightforward and so to the sections page the next thing we're going to do is to create some custom cards so this is what is going to house those sections that we need so we're going to add three custom cards for the three different sections let's drag them to where we want them to be so so data card one for accounts name industry number of employees data card two data card two for main phone email website and then data card three for basically everything else all right so the first thing we're going to do is add in a rectangle. Let's just add that in. We make it parent dot width. So you can take the full width of the form, even if you resize this. Let's set the height to about 60. And let's add in a text label. Set the color to white. And let's set it to over view oh we set this to 60 i guess it didn't save 60 and let's set this to 60 also to so be also 60 and let's increase the width a bit and just do some general styling increase the font size Let's say about 16. Let's give it some left side pattern. So let's say about 30. That should be fine. So the next thing is the drop down icons. So I would be controlling so that's the down icon. I just noticed that the label and icon not inside the form. So let's control X to cut that out. And let's go to our data card and paste it. Yep. So it is inside the data card. Let's just resize this a bit and set the color to also be white. Let's remove any sort of, any sort of borders that's fine so the next thing we are going to do is to create some collection 
to track to track um which section is open and which section is not so that on visible of this page we're going to create that collection so let's say clear collect let's just put that so we have the name of the collection call underscore form sections and then we have our uh, three form sections for each so the first one is overview contact info and other details then as opposed to our form tabs in this one we have to add in a the last variable called section selector is going to be a boolean this is what we are going to use to track the section um, active state so on visible right then well, let's say all of them to false actually false false but they are all false all right so if this is the active section you set it to be inactive on click of this icon or if it is inactive it set it to active and set all other sections to be inactive what that means is if we select the first section which is overview and it is false we basically just set this to true and leave the other that's false well, if it is already true set it to false so to do that we are going to go to the on select property of the icon and say if if look up so we are going to look up our our record so call on this conform sections where section selected is equal to true if the label to so dot label if the label is equal to this text here so label four label four dot text if it is equal to that then we do an update on that collection to set if if it is equal to true do an update on that section to set all of that to false so update it should be update if update if. so we are going to do call on section so basically we set everything to false so true if you set true here that means you are selecting everything in the collection so what we are doing now setting section selected to false so what this does it goes into form sections collection and since there is no condition we just set it to true it's going to get all the records there and then it's going to set every single one of them to false and now for the other case where this is not equal to where the active section is not equal to the current section that you clicked then in that case we are first going to set everything to false and then set this one and separate it using a run and set this one to true so update section so rather than true we are going to then say we have the section label section label is equal to this label text here or label the text equal to label the text and then what we are doing is setting it true that's fine so the next thing so that that is fine already so the next thing is to set the icon itself so basically if it is active the icon should be facing up that means signifying that it's active and you can close it by clicking so to do that we are going to go to the actual icon property and say we're going to use our if function also so let's just copy it let's just copy this actually then come back here and the icon will be pasted that there let's copy this out so if 
this is equal to the current section you set it to you set it to chevron up so if it's the current section it should the arrow should be facing up else it should be facing down so now let's just test that to be sure it's working so our field is not yet set up so it seems to set on visible so click that on back there so now the selection is selection is set right that is fine and works fine so now let's just copy that into all the other section data cards so i'm going to select this data card and copy all of them so copy that's control c then here paste it and here we also paste it and then we set this one to contact Insert. and the great thing about this is since we just referenced it we don't need to have to record everything again and this one should be other e else and we just reduce the size just select all of them drag it to the top reduce the size of this the size of this so this one's to Drag it to the top and reduce the size. All right. So the next thing is to actually link them. So what we're going to do is similar to how we did it for the um, fields for the tabs. We're going to select this so account name, industry and a um, number of employees so what we are going to be doing is the visible property so visible property we are going to be checking if the current sec active section is equal to overview show this so look up we're looking up our uh, all underscore form sections if the selected section that is if the section selected is equal to true if the label there is equal to overview so, or rather than saying overview let's just copy this text before select so it was account name industry and number of entries we set that to instead of overview, set that to label for and now let's test it out so it's now working as expected. And now let's do the same for this. Yes, on this put two. That works fine. So that is exactly how I want to do it. So if we check this and come into this page, all of them are closed. Or if we want one to be open by default, all we need to do is set it to true. So by default, anytime that page opens, it should be open by default also. And that brings us to the end of the video. Hopefully by now, you should know how to use form tabs and form sections to organize your forms in Power Apps. If you did enjoy the video, please like, share, subscribe. And until next time, bye.